I'm an American girl that survived a stereotypical strange kidnapping and attempted murder in a small town. When I was 10, I was approached by a 16 year old and asked, asked about fishing at the pond. I was walking my dog out. He pulled a knife and forced me into his truck. He drove to an, an industrial park a few miles away and told me he was going to rape me. But once he saw my obstomity obst bag, he decided not to go. He ended up forcing me to give him a hand job. After he handcuffed me, duct taped my mouth and strangled me. I pretended I was dead, so he pulled so he pulled me out of the truck. I blacked out with my face at the pavement. When I woke up, he was putting me into a dumpster and and pilling trash pull, spilling trash on me. After I heard his engine fade, I stacked the trash bags, climbed out and ran for safety. He was caught less than twenty four hours later. He owed me got ten years for attempted murder, attempted rape, kidnapping and in dense assault. He became a free man this past July and now and now lives in the next town over from me. I am not I am not fake. If you search hard enough you'll find articles. It was a it was an absolute media sensation. Contrary to popular belief, strange kidnappings and exceedingly rape rare in America. An account for only a tin fraction Tiny fraction of the number of kidnappings, a huge majority of which are condensed, are condensed kidnappings, and an even smaller fraction is those who survive them. Long pulse that felt to get it good to get out. This is something that gave me anxiety for years. And I stood and I shook while writing it. I switched from first I to first person. LP unintentionally, but it makes it easier to write about. We moved into our first house when I was five. My first memory of it was jumping on the twin beds with white wicker headboards with my sister. Our family moved in the house down the street when I was probably seven or eight. Tim, Diana, and baby Sarah. We moved out of the house when I was 13 to renovate it. We moved back when I was 14. Also, this summer, when I was allowed to have a Facebook account, Tim adds me as a friend. Oh, a grown-up family friend wants to be my friend. That's cool, except... Tim starts the conversation. Thanks for the ad. Tim starts the conversation about normal things, family, and vacations and stuff. I replied. Tim pops up when I get when I get into a relationship in 2009. Tim pops up when I break up. Tim and I talk about our families, and Tim starts talking about giving the talk to his children. Blaff is on it. Blaff is on about how much he admires my parents and their parenting style. Hey, are you still with that guy? Wouldn't want to lose our Friday night sitter. Not an exact quote. Hey girl, love your homecoming pictures. <coughs> Who's the photographer? This type of messaging is regular and will go on every few weeks until 2014. Below are some more specific incidents. I start taking outside of photography classes. Tim compliments me on my photos. Tim comments on my, on my hair color change. Tim comments on how classy I am and how smart from beginning to near the near the end. Tim comes up to the Tim comes up to take the photos of me before my senior prom. To his credit, he had a gorgeous camera and I still have one on, on of the portraits somewhere. All along, OP thinks it's fucking weird but doesn't think she's allowed to say anything but Tim is a grown up. After all, sometimes LP blows the message off for weeks and weeks, hoping it'll go away, but he's relentless. She'll ma she makes excuses like, yeah, I see these, but I'm super busy. You can email me at underscore. Edit timeline. Writing about this dislodged some things, LP gets a Twitter before college. Tim follows her. And and tweeting Lady Gaga lyrics. I need a man that's 
thinking it's right when it's so wrong. Or tweeting about wanting a black squinted miniskirt got a response from him. OP goes to college in 2011. Three years after Tim's first message, Tim starts a conversation about religion. OP gets into campus leadership and helps host an event about female orgasms. Tim wants to talk about that a lot. OP went on a coughing out outing with a cool guy. Ten, year, ten years, her senior in 2013, and tries to call herself, tries to tell herself that Tim might might just see herself as a promising and interesting person. At some point, OP mentions this to him and to her mum. OP's mum says that Tim talks to Diana about, about it sometimes and hopes that it doesn't come up across all ill-intended. Edit. OP also mentions subject matter at the, at the time of at another and OP's mum was like, you know we'll hang out with Diana and Tim a lot and they're very open-minded people. True, but not what I, I'm not well in there to fucking hear. OP comes home from college, gets drunk on dad's bar and her sister, close in age. If you, Tim, really likes message, messaging them too, blank says. When Tim plays basketball at the hoop with his son Paul in summers, when OP is is home from college, OP catches Tim gazing into the, the dining room window of OP's house, right where OP is sitting. This happens once or twice. OP takes her into internship in 2014 and makes her travel a lot. OP stays lying and Tim probably freaks out. Tim emails her, sorry OP, if our conversations have ever crossed the line, OP says, that's okay Tim, but I don't think. Should talk about that. Need photography at his, ass, at his art form anymore. Tim goes on a long rave about how much respect he has for OP and how and how his intentions were very lash lash lashless. OP never accused Tim of weird intentions. OP blocks Tim on Facebook and he notices right away. He sends in another blabbering apology, sends another email that the last one was a, a error and he and he just can't catch a break. Fuck you Tim. OP goes aboard for a year and shit that has never nothing to do with Tim. In therapy, she's learning how to forgive. She crosses the path of Tim and cur and curl dear sec and thinks, hey, she's okay he's okay. She adds Tim again on Facebook. He thanks her for the uh, ad. The therapy LP was in thought was in taught her a lot about triggers. She's br she's brings up Tim to to her therapist and the therapist is dis and disgusted with him but com pes peasant with OP. Therapist says that Tim is obsessed. OP is grossed the fuck out and the time is is shaking writing this. OP tells her tells her now fiance about the years and messages and he gets angry. Not at her, but at Tim. OP realizes that while everyone glass her for years, this is not normal. LP drafts messages she settles with. Tim, I've been thinking a lot about the conversations you've started and tried to start with me. When I was in high school and in college, a lot of the time has passed between me and a confused 15-year-old receiving messages from a neighbour who was very interested in talking to her, who repeatedly came out of a woodwork for seven years to talk about subjects like puberty, her romantic relationships, nude photography, and even events about sex on her college campus in the time I have re realised that the most do not the kind of thing. I was a precious kid and I might seem like a great person to talk to. I was very I was very young however and you were my neighbour. It would be dis disrespected to an adult to tell you that I thought that such conversations were inappropriate. And I and I have wondered all along if you knew that I didn't dare. Now I'm going to draw a line. 
you and I will not have conversations more serious than hello, how are you, and goodbye. Do not try initiate conversations about anything more personal or sensitive than that. If you still have any of my prom photos from 2011, you'll permanently delete them. You you need to, you need to you need to talk to a professional about boundaries. I did. Tim replies with a long apology, but swears his intentions were innocent and name and laments about losing the respect of someone he holds in his high regard. Tim Tim responds to delete all photos he has of me, prom and neighbors <coughs> neighborhood parties. Apparently, how long was he photographing me for? And deleting his Facebook, supposedly. So, Tim, although I see your house every time I drive away from my parents' house, home on a, on a rare visit, and although you did nothing illegal, you can you can keep pretending that you're normal, old dad, and a nice guy. And I will look like a dick when I exclude you and your family from my wedding. Let's not fucking meet.